My name's Jonathan Swinton. I'm here in the uh, Science Museum of Science and Industry in Manchester. Uh, the reason I'm here is to stand behind, beside this uh, machine, which is a, a very early computer from the 1950s, with a very similar model to the one that Alan Turing um, chose to come to work on in the early 1950s. Uh, and the thing that the problem that he was interested in working on on these computers was the problem of uh, how Fibonacci numbers and biological structure reflected mathematical rules. Now, uh, uh, to honour that, um, that that work, uh, this year we're running a math science experiment, um, uh, which is going to work on three different levels. The first level, and I think for many people the most uh, wonderful level, is the ability to grow a sunflower uh, and see uh, in the mature seed head the spiral patterns obeying Fibonacci rules, which is, if you've never done it before, is a, I think a, for many people just a, a really a real wow moment. So if you haven't done it, I encourage you to try it just for that on its own. But there's a second and a third level which are more, uh, which require more mass participation. And the second level is just to try and put that observation that we see these, some, these Fibonacci numbers on a small scientific footing. That in fact, in the whole uh, history of the subject, there have only ever been two studies uh, are systematically looking at sunflowers, so one of the most recent of which is 80 years old and looked at 300. So we're going to try and replicate those, ex those observational studies and see if we get the same results here in Manchester in 2012, uh, like good scientists. Um, and then there's a third level trying to push these observations a little bit further because mathematicians over the time since Turing have come up with uh, quite powerful theories of why these Fibonacci structures ought to appear uh, based on fairly simple mathematical models of the pattern formation processes underlying them. While molecular biologists have come up with fairly convincing uh, explanations of the molecular biology underlying pattern formation. But we've not really managed convincingly to put the two of them together in a, in a com totally convincing story about why, where the sunflower gets its Fibonacci numbers. Now this data set by itself isn't going to do that, but it's going to be part of the ingredients of understanding uh, which of those models are powerful because they predict things and which aren't. And one of the ways that they could do that, for instance, is to ask what happens when you don't get a Fibonacci number. Based on those previous data sets, we expect about 10 or 15% of people won't find a Fibonacci number. And in some ways, they're the most interesting people because when we look at the patterns of seed packing in those heads, those seed heads, or the arrangement of other uh, parts of the sunflower in those sunflowers, and also in the ones uh, that do display Fibonacci numbers, we'll be able to get some understanding of the... the uh, interrelationship between patterns and growth that these mathematical models um, uh, display. So on three levels I think this is going to be uh, an experiment that contributes data uh, really usefully um, to the scientific understanding. Um, and in that way I think it really honours Turing's memory here in 2012 because he was someone that was passionate about this problem all through his life and I think he would have been very interested to see the results of the experiment as I'm going to be too.